What's up, Nerdyverse? I'm Daddy Louie, and in this video, we are taking a look at a game called Rescuing Robin Hood. So stick around. Before we get started, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe for more content and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Rescuing Robin Hood is a brand new game coming to Kickstarter from Castillo Games. Uh, it is for one to five players. It does have a solo mode. Uh, it is for ages 10 and up and takes around 20 minutes per player. You and your friends are going to band together with the Merry Men of uh, Sherwood Forest and try to uh, rescue Robin Hood. Robin Hood has been captured, and the Sheriff of Nottingham will execute him in five days. So you have five days or rounds uh, in which you and your friends are going to um, attack guards, uh, rescue um, villagers to help you in your cause, and ultimately uh, storm Nottingham Castle to try and rescue Robin Hood. If you do that uh, before the end of the fifth day, you and your band win. If you don't, uh, you know, Robin Hood is executed and you lose. But is it good? Well, if you join me on the table, we'll check it out. All right, so here's everything that I got inside the box. Before we start, uh, just to let everybody know, this is a pre-production copy um, the quality of everything here is really, really great, um, but I just want to throw that out there that it is pre-production, so there are some things that may change. Um, so there's a lot of materials here, that, as you can see, so we're going to go over them really, really quickly. Um, so these cards right here are the setup cards. Uh, you're going to decide uh, how many players you have. They're double-sided, and that's going to uh, let you know basically... Uh, what types of guards and villagers to rescue are um, are available uh, per round. So that's what these are here. Uh, you have your tracker cards. These are what uh, tracks your attributes from round to round. Um, each one of the players is going to get one of these, as well as some of these tracking cubes. You're going to get two of each color, and each color represents the different attributes in the game, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, then over here we have some challenge cards. These are for the solo player mode. Uh, so these are the, uh, the single player. And these just make the game a little bit harder and give you uh, more of a challenge in the expert mode. So there's actually a couple of different ways that you can play solo, which is really, really neat. Um, then you have your, uh, your, your, merry, your merry men, your merry band of, of uh, people here that are uh, trying to rescue Robin Hood. So uh, there's some characters that I didn't recognize, but I believe they are all from uh, Robin Hood lore. But you have your main characters that everybody knows and loves. Little John, Friar Tuck, Maid Marian, etc. Um, I do want to point out as we go through this that uh, they've done a really great job here of keeping everybody uh, really diverse. So you're going to see a very large diversity of different uh, ethnicities and uh, genders and stuff like that throughout the villagers and stuff, which is really, really cool. Uh, so that's what these are. These are the villagers. Um, so the ones without any uh, symbol in the top right corner, those are your starter uh, villagers. Each player is going to be dealt eight of these to create their starting deck, and any leftover is going to be Return to the box, no need to use those. And then the other ones here uh, that do have a symbol in the top right corner are either bronze, silver, or gold. Uh, that is just the, the represents kind of the quality of uh, the villager. Obviously, the, the bronze ones are weaker, the uh, silver ones are, you know, your middle of the pack, and then your gold ones are like your top tier ones. Um, then we have our guards. There's two different types of guards. There's blue and there's red. Uh, blue are the uh, easier to take out guys, and the red are more difficult. Uh, you have Nottingham Castle. This is a card that you have to storm uh, in the final round of the game in order to rescue Robin Hood. You, of course, have Robin Hood himself, uh, who you will need to rescue there, and if you do, becomes a part of your team. And then the Sheriff of Nottingham, which... Uh, taking him out is actually a, uh, a bonus round. You don't actually have to take out the Sheriff of Nottingham to win the game, uh, but we'll talk about that more a little later. Uh, and then over here you have your, um, 
these aren't your attributes. These are like your uh, your skill tokens. Uh, so there's three different skills, uh, prayer, scouting, and cookery. The cookery tokens are double-sided uh, as brew tokens. Uh, if you don't spend your cookery tokens, they can turn into brew tokens uh, to be used later on. And then, of course, your first player token, which rotates around. Uh, so that's everything that came inside of the box other than the rules and stuff like that. Uh, let me go ahead and set up. So uh, the mo one of the most unique things about this game is actually the setup. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to show everything on the table, but I'll do the best that I can. Uh, I'm going to set up for a, uh, a two-player game just to save on some room, and uh, then I'll show you how it plays. It plays the same um, on every uh, player count. It's just uh, the amount of villains and stuff that you have to take out changes based upon uh, the player count. Also, uh, there are different uh, days. So like, for example, on a two-player game, you've got day one and day two. That's round one and round two. Um, but there's more than one of those, so you can choose uh, different ones, which is going to mix up the, uh, the type of gameplay experience that you get. And that's actually uh, something that we're hoping to see in the Kickstarter, that they add more of these through stretch goals as well. So that way, every time you play, you're uh, getting a different experience. But anyway, let me set up for the game, and I'll show you how it plays. Okay, so like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, each um, game is going to consist of five days or rounds. Um, and each round, you are going to follow the same, um, the same steps. Um, so the first thing that you do is what's called New Day Setup, and that's what I've gone ahead and done for you here. Um, so essentially what you're going to do um, at the beginning of the game, you're going to deal everybody two of the band leader cards, and then they're going to choose one and get rid of the other one. Um, so in this two-player game, we just so happen to get uh, Little John and Maid Marian for uh, example purposes. Um, and then you're going to um, basically build your little Robin Hood. You don't necessarily have to do this, um, uh, but it looks nice on the table to have Robin Hood, the castle, the Sheriff of Nottingham, and then the player setup. And this is really, the player setup card is really what's going to determine what you see here out on the board. So the first two rounds, uh, days one and two, for a two-player game, uh, choosing this particular card. We have the archery contest. And what you're going to do is set up rows of uh, guards like it shows on the card with uh, captured villagers with the symbols uh, that are represented on there. So really easy. Uh, we have two, uh, a line of two guards over here. Uh, the last one in the line is always flipped up. Everything else is face down. So we have one guard and um, one hidden guard here for the two and they have captured this Sir Render right here um, because he has the bronze little squirrel symbol. Uh, over here, we've got a row of three with the last guard facing up, and they are holding another bronze squirrel guard, um, Scholastica. And then down here, we have a row of eight guards um, with holding two silver uh, villagers here, uh, Amabel and Jimmy Thalock. So uh, that's how setting up this works. And then you're going to go through the round, and at the end of the round, if you don't rescue all of the villagers, any villagers that you don't rescue go over to Nottingham Castle to be captured, and any guards that remain um, left on the board, they are going to go and protect the Sheriff of Nottingham. So you don't necessarily have to clear uh, everything out at the end of every by the end of every round, but whatever you don't clear out is going to work against you later on in the late game. Um, and then you do that for round one and two. Then you go to the next card for round three and four, and then finally your castle set up on day five. So that's how setting up the new day uh, at the beginning of each round works, uh, which I've gone ahead and done for you. Also, at the beginning of the game, you deal out eight of the. Um, eight of the generic villagers uh, to make the player's deck. They're going to then shuffle those up, and they're going to draw the first four. So the first four cards are going to be their hand for round one. The second uh, cards are going to be their hand for round two. 
and uh, then you can make your deck better and better uh, at the um, bottom of round two and the bottom of round four. Um, that's when you do the refined deck step, but we'll get to that, I promise. Uh, so that's, that's just the setup. That's brand new day setup. So then after uh, you're done setting up, you go ahead and draw your hand. So in this case, it'll be four cards, and uh, you go ahead and lay them out, giving yourselves, uh, giving you the attributes that it says for the that round. So uh, let me explain how this works. We're going to pretend Maid Marian is first player here, and then we are going to look at the cards that she drew, and we are going to give her the attributes uh, on her tracker that she can use to attack with. Um, so the first thing that you look at is the character herself. She starts with four wit. Um, before we get into this, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the uh, look at the attributes and the skill tokens, and I'll explain to you what those do. All right, so uh, I'm going to use Robin Hood here just to uh, give you a uh, brief overview of what the four attributes in the game are. Uh, so you have wit, stealth, brawn, and jolliness. Uh, wit is a uh, an attacking skill uh, that you will use to attack guards. And when you attack with wit, it's all a push your luck mechanic. So you are going to take out the first. Uh, for example, here if Robin Hood was attacking uh, this row here, uh, he's going to start with the first guard. He has eight wit. This guard has two wit, so he easily beats him. He can stop there, but he has six wit left. He can push his luck and flip the next guy to try and take him out. Um, if he flips the next guy over with, and the total is more wit than he has, then everything stays and nothing happens. You don't win. So that push your luck element really comes into play when using wit. Um, the next one is stealth. Stealth allows you to attack players uh, or attack guards that are not the first guard. They can You can attack any of the guards in the row. Um, but you won't know what their stats are until you flip them over. So you're kind of taking a risk unless you have um, unless you have another skill like scouting that will allow you to see what's underneath there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so that's how stealth works. So wit, you start with the first guy, push your luck going over. Stealth, you choose which guys you want to take out. Uh, brawn is you have to take on the entire row. So something like a short row up here, Brawn is really good for. Brawn is not necessarily great for big rows like this unless you have a large pile of Brawn saved up. Um, and then the last thing that you're looking at is Jolliness. Jolliness is actually a, uh, an attribute that you spend to increase um, your other stats. So right here, Robin Hood has six Jolliness. He could spend all six to increase... Uh, his wit to increase his stealth, his brawn, or he can spread them out. At the end of your turn, any brawn or jolliness that you have left over gets passed to the next player. Uh, wit and stealth do not. So, uh, you know, if, if Maid Marian, for example, has, you know, six jolliness that she doesn't need to spend, she can wait and allow Little John to take it. Or since Little John has a natural four brawn, she could, you know, work on her wit and her stealth, allowing Little John to take all of her brawn. So that's how jolliness works. Uh, and again, brawn, like I said, that can pass over to the next player as well if you choose not to spend it. So that's the four attributes, wit, um, stealth, uh, brawn, and jolliness. Uh, remember, I also mentioned that there are uh, three uh, skills, right? There's prayer, cookery, and um, scouting. So uh, the way that prayer works is that you can use a one prayer to uh, shift a guard from any position to any other position in any line. So, for example, I could take this guard and move him up here if I wanted to, which would allow me to flip this guy next. Um, you can spend two prayer together to automatically defeat uh, any guard in any row. Um, the only time that you can't do that is obviously to take out the Sheriff of Nottingham. 
Um, but that's how prayer works. And you can spend your prayer on other people's turns as well. Uh, and you can ask other people to spend their prayer on your turns. Um, cookery is, uh, it allows you to increase your wit, your brawn, or your stealth by two. Um, but you can only use this um, in the current round that it's on. If you don't use it, it goes away. However, you can also spend it to flip it over to become a brew. And the brew turns into one jolliness, which you can then spend on your next turn. So that's how it allows you to take this skill and use it on the following turn. And then the final skill is scouting. Scouting allows you to reveal any two sheriff guards from one pile. So uh, when we were talking earlier about how uh, stealth works, you could first use scouting to flip certain guards over in a row and then use stealth to take out those guards. Um, so that's a really good combination. Um, but remember, uh, at the end of the round, these uh, skills go away except for cookery again turns into a brew token which could be used um, as a jolliness. So that's the way that the attributes and the skills work. So after you've done your first day setup, you draw your band of cards and then you assign your attributes to your characters. So uh, right now looking at the cards that I got, I got one scouting here and then no other attributes. So Maid Marian is going to get a scouting token. And then she goes heads and counts up all of her attributes together. So I start with a natural four wit. I got two wit here and then minus one wit. So that would be six minus one is five. So I'm going to start with five wit. Um, so it stays at zero. Uh, my stealth, I've got three, five, eight. So I'm going to get eight uh, stealth. Then I've got uh, brawn one three, seven, ten. Wow, uh, that's pretty good. Ten and zero. And then uh, jolliness, I got two. Uh, now I'll be the first person to say I do not like these tracking cards. Um, I know that a lot of games use a system like this. I know it's cheap for the developers or cheapish for the developers to just get some cubes and use it on the card. I would much rather pay a little bit more and have like a spin down dice or a, a dial. Uh, there's a lot of games now that come with dials and I think that a, a game like this would really benefit from dials because these cubes just get bumped and moved all over. It's hard to read, uh, not a fan. Uh, if you've played the game on, uh, I believe it's on Tabletopia, um, you know, the tracker is much cleaner because you can just enter a number and it works like that. But anyway, that's, it's not a huge issue. Uh, I just, that's just one, that's like the one negative thing that, uh, that I took away from playing. I just, I'm not a fan of the tracker. Um, cause it's like hard to remember. It's like, this is 10, two, five, eight, but you can see they go up to 40 because you can chain together some pretty big numbers. So it starts to get pretty confusing. Anyway, um, so those are my attributes. That's what I do. So now it's my, uh, it's my attack phase. I get two attacks per turn, and I can only use um, two of my skills to do that. So uh, looking at what I've got. So I've got 10 wit. Um, this is a pretty high wit right here, and I may want to try and take these down. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I'm sorry, not wit, stealth. Uh, and then I've got this token as well. Hmm. I'm trying to think about what I can do here. All right. Uh, I'm going to sp I'm going to attack with. Um, and you have to declare if you're going to use attributes or um, skills in advance. I should probably do Little John's skills first to see what he's got um, because it may help me. So little John here, yeah, he got he got three scouting, which is crazy good. Uh, three scouting. He got one prayer, uh, and then let's see what else he's got here. Uh, he's got um, six six wit. He's got four natural brawn plus three is seven brawn. 
Uh, he has two minus one, so he's got one jolliness, and he's got two, uh, five, six uh, stealth. So his numbers were much, much lower than Maid Marian's, but that's all right. Uh, so that's how that's how these um, that's how this works here. So uh, little John can do some do some shenanigans here. Um, he's going to spend his prayer to move this guy up here. Flip this over. That gives us a little bit more of a, an idea of what we need to, uh, what we can do here. So she actually has more brawn than he does, which is crazy. Um, but he can go ahead and spend all of these, one, two, three, three scouting tokens to flip over one, two, three, four, five, six cards. He can actually flip over all of these. Uh, and you want to keep them in the same order that they're already in. Um, just because you have to, sometimes you may have to take them out in order. So let's reveal all that. It's good scouting, guys. And then she can spend her scouting to flip over these two. So the only two that are hidden are, is this one up here. So now they can get a better idea of what they need to take out. So they would need 11 wit here, uh... He, neither one of them has close to 11 wit. Um, uh, so these stats on the blue cards, they range from 1 to 6, with 3 being the average. Um, I'm actually not seeing any 3s here. So uh, da, 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 that would go up to a 7. 7 wit. I, I don't know if we can take everything out. I was going to try and be hopeful that I could take that I could take everything out, but it's not looking good. So uh, the highest uh, thing that we have here is Brawn. Uh, Brawn, she has 10 Brawn. So she's going to spend her 10 Brawn, um, which takes her down to zero. Uh, actually, she doesn't even need to spend it all. So she's going to say Brawn, which reveals this line here. And this line is five, six, seven. So she only use, needs to use seven of them. That's important because that extra three will go over to uh, will go over to Little John. So uh, she takes out all of these guards. They get discarded into the guard discard pile, and they rescue this surrender. We're just going to put him to the side for a second uh, because we will draft him later on. Uh, so now she has one more attack. She already spent her brawn, so she needs to either use her wit or her uh, or her stealth. Um, so her wit or her stealth is eight. Um, looking here, she could do. Let's see, that's ten. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So she'll spend her two uh, jolliness to increase her stealth from eight to ten, and then she will spend all ten of her. Uh, stealth to take out these uh, combined for 10 guards again discarding them to the discard and freeing this Scholastica guy uh, and he's going to be again saved for later and then drafted so then it's going to go from Maid Marian's turn because she did both of her stuff over to Little John um, she has no wit or I'm sorry no jolliness to pass to Little John but she does have brawn so her three brawn is going to go to him. He's going to go from seven to ten brawn, um, which isn't enough to beat this. You can see how crazy uh, that is. But maybe we can get this down a little bit. Let's see what we can do. Um, and then uh, that's it. That's all she's going to pass on to Little John. Little John uh, has no other tokens or anything like that. So, uh, you know, he can spend his one jolliness to increase his brawn to 11 uh, but then we need to definitely get this down a little bit uh, he also has six wit which um, uh, you can see you know the way wit works is you're again you're pushing your luck but you there's no luck here because you know what it is that you're 
going to work with. So let's try and do the math here. So we have 8 wit. Um, I can do 2, 6, 7, 8. It would get rid of these first three. And then I would have, um, let's see, 7, 10. I would have 13 in... Uh, I would have 13 left and only 11. So I wouldn't be able to take that out with brawn. Um, let's see what I can do with my with my stealth. Let's see if we can take out some higher numbers. So I have 8 stealth. Uh, 8, 6. And while you guys are watching this, if you're still watching, you'll probably see a combo here that maybe I don't see. Um, I don't know that there's any way that I can take this out, unfortunately. Um, 8, 5, 9... 12, that's too much. Uh, I could increase it to 9 and take out this 6 and this 4. Or wait, this 6 and this 3 down here. So then I would be left with 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 17, that's too much. So basically there's there's nothing that I can do to take out this whole whole row, unfortunately. So we just need to get it down so that not so many of these guards. So for time's sake and simplicity here, um, I'm just going to spend my um, my eight wit on little John here, which is going to get rid of these three. Uh, yep, six, seven, eight. So these go in the discard. And then over here, uh, again, if I try and do the brawn, um, uh, I have 11 brawn, but there's 13 brawn showing here. I wouldn't be able to take out the whole row. So instead, what the only thing that I can do is the stealth. So I'm going to spend my one jolliness to increase my stealth to nine. And then I'm going to take out the, the nine stuff. I'm going to take out nine worth. Um, actually, five, six, seven, eight, nine better to have less so we got close um, but we didn't quite get it out so uh, these two guys they're going to be captured they're going to go up here to Nottingham Castle and then this guard is going to go over here to protect the sheriff uh, in later stages so that's that's the end of the round there uh, and now we go into the uh, recruit villagers step so these two villagers are available to be recruited uh, by by the two players. Uh, there's two of them, so they'll each get one. Uh, the first player here gets priority. They can pass if they want to allow Little John to get first choice, or Little John could pass to allow Maid Marian to take both. Um, so we already know that Little John has really good scouting, uh, so we're actually going to take this to give Maid Marian the scouting, and then we're going to give this to Little John. So these would go into the discard pile. This was Maid Marian's deck, and this was Little John's deck. Uh, so these go into their discard pile. Um, and then you would draw your next four cards for the next turn. Um, you're going to discard uh, all of your unspent tokens, if you have any. Uh, you clear out the leftover villagers and guards, which we already did. And then you pass the first player token, and then start a new day. You start by doing the same thing that we did before with the two guards, three guards, eight guards. Uh, and you do that until you get to round five, basically, when you storm the castle. The only other thing that we need to talk about really quickly is um, improving your decks, which is... Uh, the refined deck step, which only happens at the end of day two and the end of day four. All right, so at the end of day two, um, you're going to have a larger stack of cards. You're going to have the eight cards that you started the game with, plus any of the uh, villagers that you, um, that you freed and then recruited. Um, so your stacks will be a, a little bit bigger. So now at the end of round two in the refined deck step, you're going to refine your deck down to um, eight cards again. So in this case, I've got, I have 11 cards. Three of them will have to go. Uh, they go into Sherwood Forest and they are free to go about their lives. They're done with the fight. So I'm basically going to go through here and pick out, 
you know, the best ones, the ones that are going to um, help me out the most. I probably want to keep, um, you know, the, the, the guys that I recruited and then decide how I want to uh, work from there. Um, but I'm going to go down to eight cards. And that those eight cards are going to be my next two hands in round three and four. So you shuffle them up, draw four, shuffle, uh, and then the second uh, four, the last four, will be for round four. So then at the end of round four, again, you'll have recruited new stuff uh, like before, you're going to then go down to four cards, and that will be your final hand. So you were fine twice. The first time you were fine down to eight cards, uh, at the end of round two, that is for round three and four. And then at the end of round four, you refine your deck one more time down to four cards, and that will be your final four cards that you will use in round five to storm the castle. So now that you know how all of that works, <laughs> let's go and talk about how to storm the castle and how to actually win the game. All right, so the final round of the game, uh, day five, works exactly the same way as the other days did, with a few exceptions. Um, this is the Nottingham Castle layout. Uh, you have the walls, the courtyard, and then the sheriff himself. In order to win the game, you only have to worry about the walls and the courtyard. This wins you the game, if you can clear this out here. If you'd like a bonus to try and also take out the Sheriff of Nottingham, you can of course keep playing to do that. Um, but it all must be done on the same day. So uh, it is a tough challenge to do. Um, I personally have not actually been able to beat the Sheriff yet, uh, but I'm still working on it. Um, so you, on your day five, you're going to set everything up exactly like that with the walls, the courtyard, and the sheriff as the bonus quest. Um, the first, you determine who goes first, uh, so you don't have to stay in the current player order. Uh, and of course you're going to have a, uh, a powerhouse deck, right? Those four cards that you chose, uh, at the end of round four. Uh, the player that takes out Nottingham Castle gets an immediate jolliness bonus uh, as soon as they take it out. And the amount of jolliness that they get is equal to, you get one jolliness point for every three villagers that you have in Sherwood Forest. If you remember, um, once, we, uh, once we refreshed our decks, um, any characters that we didn't want to keep in our decks we put them into Sherwood Forest. So the more characters that you can get into Sherwood Forest, the better your jolliness bonus will be. You have to take out each row in order. So you first must do the walls, then the courtyard, then the sheriff. You can't do them in opposite order uh, or in any other order. So first you take out the walls, and then you take out the courtyard. Once you've taken out the courtyard, you have freed... Uh, you have freed Robin Hood here, and you immediately win the game. Again, you can keep going if you want to, um, as, and that's assuming that you have attacks remaining. So uh, as a bonus, the player who freed Robin Hood gets to uh, take him and add him to their band and get his attributes um, added to their total. And then uh, remember, when facing off against the sheriff... Uh, you're going to set up the sheriff like it says on the card. So in this case, it's five red guards. But then remember, uh, any of the guards that you did not beat throughout the first four rounds also go to protect the sheriff. So you're going to actually add them uh, to the front of that um, to the front of that stack. So in this case, we had five guards we weren't able to take out. So we now have to take out 10 guards in order to face the sheriff and take him out. As you can see in a two-player game, that's pretty tough to do. Um, but anyway, guys, that's the game. So you're going to go through uh, each day setting up uh, new guards and new villagers. You're going to refine your deck at the bottom of round two, the bottom of round four, taking your four best cards into the fifth round, to try and take out Robin, or try and free Robin Hood. If you can do that, you win, and then you can take on the bonus of uh, taking out the Sheriff of Nottingham. And that, guys, is everything that you need to know in order to play Rescuing Robin Hood. So what do I think of Rescuing Robin Hood? Well, 
This game is by far one of my favorite games of 2020. The year is almost over, and this is by far one of the most fun games that I have played so far this year. Um, it's easily accessible. Um, setting up the setup parts and the in-between rounds is the most complicated part of the game. And as long as somebody in the group knows how to do that, you can virtually play this game with anybody. I mean, it's really, really uh, simple mechanics, easy to learn how to play, uh, and it's fun for everybody. It's got the complexity of a game like Catan, uh, which is a family favorite in this house anyway. Um, and I think that this game easily replaces something like that. Um, it's just that good. Uh, all of the art, like I said, is full of diversity. The art is really simple and really fun. I like it a lot. Um, stretch goals that they hope to have uh, to unlock. They're going to add scenarios to the setup cards like we talked about. Uh, new challenge cards for solo play, which we didn't really talk about. But solo play works exactly like it does um, any other game. You're basically just playing as multiple players. Um, so it's really simple to play by yourself. Um, and possibly adding uh, game components, new things into the game with those stretch goals. Uh, I will leave links to everything in the description below. This is not something that you guys are going to want to sleep on. This is going to be uh, a big hit, I think. And, um, you know, you go over to their Kickstarter, which launches uh, November 10th, and show them some love and some support. What do you guys think of Rescuing Robin Hood? Let me know down in the comments section below. Uh, if you would not like to see more from the Circle of Nerds, you can find us over on our social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Circle of Nerds. Also, don't forget that we have a podcast that comes out every week called The Cosmic Disaster Show. You can find that right here on YouTube or anywhere that you enjoy listening to podcasts. And for an extra bit of love to us here at the Circle of Nerds, please consider checking us out over on Patreon at patreon.com slash circleofnerds. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. I will see you in the next video.